Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're talking ABS fault lights and I'm going to show you the four most common causes that illuminate or cause that ABS fault as well as the ABS light. Let's go out to the vehicle and take a look. All right, YouTubers outside in the garage now and I'm going to cover the items in the likelihood order that they would actually cause that ABS light to illuminate on your dash. With that said, the most common cause of that ABS light illuminating on your dashboard or instrument cluster is a failed speed sensor. Now inspecting the speed sensor can be done with your tire still attached to the vehicle. However, for your convenience, I'm going to remove the tire to give you a better picture of the entire speed sensor and all the wiring. Step one, safety first, always cut all electrical power to your system. 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, go ahead and remove your black negative cable from your battery lead. And position the actual cable in a way where it's not going to hop back and make contact with the lead throughout the project. At this point I lifted up the truck with the jack and I inserted a jack stand and lowered the jack and allowed the truck to rest on the jack stand. Never ever 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 trust a jack when you're going underneath a vehicle. And from here, come on into the inner portion of your actual wheel hub assembly. And again, yours may be different. This is a Chevy Colorado. So your speed sensor might just be a slight bit different than ours. However, come down in here. In most cases, you have a 10 millimeter bolt that secures the speed sensor plate to the actual hub. And coming down below into the inner portion, you will see the circular portion of your magnetic ring that the speed sensor wiring connects into. And as this wheel spins at high speeds, this actual magnetic ring inside here communicates with the speed sensor on the hub assembly as well and sends that reading to the actual onboard computer. And all four tires have to be the exact same reading. So with that said, in the event that this fails, it will no longer create that constant reading that the other three are giving. Thus, you will get that ABS fault. So just inspect this, make sure that there is no heavily coated corrosion, no dents or dings with the actual portion here. Follow the wiring all the way up, make sure everything is secure, make sure that there is no signs of stress. Examples of stress would be melted wiring or cuts, allowing an electrical shortage. Make sure it is firmly secured and just inspect all the wiring. Come all the way up here, it loops around this internal threaded bolt here and goes all the way back to the actual electrical connection point here. What I will do is remove it from these two connection prongs and I'll show you a much better view of the actual connection point. All right, I went ahead and removed the actual sensor from the connection point and on the rear side, those are the connection prongs that I compressed and was able to push through those holes. And again, your electrical wiring feeds into this electrical connection point. Here's the big kicker with this electrical connection point. In the event that it gathers moisture inside this plastic housing, it will send an ABS fault. And a few things actually cause that. In the event that you have a very high humidity day, or you actually drive through several puddles on the way home after a rainy day, or if it's winter time and you are gathering a lot of snow in your wheel well, as well as ice, chances are that will interfere with this actual connection point in your ABS system will detect a fault. So what I recommend is slowly and carefully disconnect this electrical connection point. You see a tab on the upper portion here. You will compress that inward and at the same time shift this electrical connection point off here. And in the event that you see moisture, let it dry for a few hours and get all that moisture out of there because it is possible that is the ultimate cause of your ABS light on your instrument cluster. So once you inspect that, you can put it back into its connection points. Connection point of the speed sensor is re-secured to the vehicle and on to most common cause item two. And that has to deal with your actual wheel hub assembly and the internal magnetic ring as well as this rotor. However, first we'll address the magnetic ring. So coming down in here, as I showed you earlier, is this circular casing here, and inside here is your magnetic ring, and as the wheel spins, your magnetic ring communicates with your speed sensor, and your speed sensor sends that data to the onboard computer. And again, as I mentioned earlier, all four tires have to be the exact reading, which means all four tires have to be spinning at the same speed. However, over time, these parts fail, and the most common cause of this failure is a damaged magnetic ring. And with that said, over time, as the magnetic ring ages, 
is it becomes brittle, it becomes weak, and it actually begins to fall apart inside, and pieces of the magnetic ring begin to fall off. And at that point, as your wheel is spinning, your speed sensor is no longer gathering a constant or correct reading from the magnetic ring, because the magnetic ring is missing pieces. And once it gets to that point, your speed sensor sends the signal to the onboard computer that something has gone wrong here, and your onboard computer will throw that ABS light on your instrument cluster. So it's very possible that you may have to replace this magnetic ring that is actually part of your hub assembly. So with that said, on to the second portion of this item is your rotor. You want to make sure that your rotor is not warped or loose. So what you can do is actually spin your rotor and obviously there is going to be tension with your rotor and your brake pads. That's normal. That's how it's supposed to be. However, as you spin this, if you get to a hard point where it is no longer easy to rotate, chances are you have a warped rotor or your rotor's not on tight. And what I want you to do at that point is verify that your rotor is secured as well as no visible signs of damage or warping of the actual rotor. Again, it needs to spin freely. At this point, tire is back on and secured. I removed the jack stand, lower the vehicle, remove the jack, and your inspection of this entire wheel well area is complete. Now we're on to common cause number three. It has to do with your fuses. So come on inside your engine compartment. Again, this is a Chevy Colorado. Your fuse box may be in a different location. However, you have connection tabs on each side of the case. And this is my cooling hose for the battery compartment. Just carefully remove that, shift it out of the way. And here is a better view of the actual connection tabs. Just push in and pull up on both sides. And as you can see, I got wiring in here, so I'm going to be very careful as I remove this case. And on the inner portion, I want you to position this cap in a way that it is mirroring the actual layout of your fuses. So for example, the bottom row is 30, 30, 30, 40, 30. 30, 30, 30, 40, 30. You've got two large ones on the right-hand side and a large one on the lower left and too large on the right and that large starter fuse on your left. So now that this is positioned the exact same way here, we will be able to locate the actual fuses much more efficiently and inspect them. So with the Chevy Colorado, you have three fuses. And in most cases, you probably have three fuses as well for your ABS system. For us, ABS-1 and ABS-2 are on the far lower left corner. ABS-1, ABS-2, you have a 30 amp and a 40 amp. Coming inside here, as you can see, there is the 30 amp, there is the 40 amp, and just make sure that they are in and secured in the event that one is loose. That could definitely turn on your ABS light. However, in the event that they are both secured, not loose, you want to pull them out. And you want to pull them out very carefully, and you want to inspect them. Making progress, both these fuses are removed. I used a needle nose plier to carefully pull these fuses out, and they're pretty long. That's what they look like. Before inspecting the actual fuses, come back down below and inspect the internal leads inside where the fuses go. In the event that you have a lot of corrosion in this area, you will need to carefully clean that corrosion up and allow the connection point of the actual fuse to gain a better connection to those leads. If those look good, come up to your actual fuse. Obviously, you want to verify that the internal portion of the fuse is not blown or any signs of overheating or burning, and you will see a bunch of black residue in the event that the fuse blew and overheated and burned. So verify that your fuses are good. Come down below, verify that the lower connection leads are not corroded and they're there and in good condition. Inspect both fuses. This is the 40 amp fuse for ABS-2. Again, good condition, no signs of stress internally with the actual fuse. The casing is in good condition, no signs of melting, no signs of overheating, and the internal connection leads are good. Once you verify all that and these fuses are good, you can go ahead and resecure them. I'll do the 40 amp first, and the 40 goes in at an angle there to properly connect to the leads, and now the 30. And prior to moving on to the third fuse, make sure that both of those fuses are properly inserted and secured fully. From here, back to the diagram, I want you to come up to this little 10 amp fuse. As you can see, it is titled ABS. It is just above your large wiper two which if you come down here, there's your large wiper two. You have two smaller than these larger, however, much bigger than the little ones. 
And if we reference those, those are your horn and fuel pumps. However, just to the left of your horn is that 10 amp fuse belonging to your ABS system. Go ahead and remove that and inspect it. And however you get these fuses out, be very careful. You don't want to drop them or harm them. Set that inside there and we will inspect it. A couple things we're looking for. Any corrosion on the leads? Get that off there. That will interfere with the connection point and possibly turn on your ABS light. Make sure that the internal fuse is not blown and no signs of overheating, no signs of stress, no signs of burning. And that fuse looks good. Down to the connection point. Again, deep down in there, you have connection leads. Just kind of make sure this area is clean. You may not be able to clean the internal leads, obviously, because they are deep in there. However, just make sure that area is completely clean. No signs of moisture, no signs of corrosion, and no signs of loose debris. If there is, get that out of there. From here, all of these fuses look good. And I'm going to insert this back into its respective slot carefully, push down and verify that it is properly secured and flush into its slot. From here, all fuses look good in our case. In the event that they do not look good, these two fuses are dealership fuses only. You'll have to contact your dealership and purchase those fuses, which is not a big deal. And this little 10 amp fuse, you can get that at a local gas station or better yet, your local auto zone. From here, let's go ahead and resecure the case. As you reinsert and secure this cap, just be careful. As you can see, I got wiring. I do not want to harm that. Push down until these connection tabs make the clicking sound, as you can see here. And in our case, we have our battery cooling hose. Resecure that and that completes the third most common cause of your ABS light turning on. Now on to the fourth common cause and it's the fourth because it is the least likely. However, in the event that you have completed all the first three steps and or replaced all the parts and your ABS light is still on, it's very possible that your ABS control module needs to be replaced. And this is a very dynamic and unique part because as you can see, a lot of lines feeding into it and the internal portion of the module is the brain of the system and communicates with the entire ABS system and verifies that all ABS parts are properly configured and operating to their normal state. However, again, this could fail, it's very possible. And in the event that it does, it will need to be replaced. And again, Chevy Colorado, your control module may be in a different location. It is in the upper right hand corner of our engine compartment near our brake booster and what I want to do is I want to go over to our Camry and show you where it's located on that. Got the hood up on our 99 Camry and it is on the lower left hand corner of the engine compartment. As you can see it looks very similar. This is over 10 years older than our Chevy Colorado and the part itself didn't really change much and the difference in manufacture from Chevy to Toyota the design of the actual control module is not much different. So again that's what it looks like, so take a few minutes and try to find it in your engine if it needs to be replaced. At this point, the negative terminal is resecured to the battery, close the hood, and again, those are the four most common causes of your ABS light to come on, on your instrument cluster. And again, ABS lights, in most cases, for all people, are a nightmare because it requires you to run through a rabbit race, as we just showed through this video. However, definitely reach out to us with questions because we want to help you figure out your ABS issues because we've been through it as well. And we've got several videos of replacing speed sensors, we've got videos on on replacing actual hub assemblies, magnetic rings, and what I will do is post those down below in the description section as well as the comment section. So look at those videos, take a few minutes and view them. They may be very helpful to you and that would be awesome. From here again, we hope the video helped. Below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us and that will be awesome. Thanks again for watching.